Yeah, I was wondering what clock you wanted to go by. So far, and no, no, none of, no clothes or anything. That's just all there except for their phone. Fun time. It's like furnishing another apartment. DJ, that's we had that schedule for twenty seconds last to twenty thirty. Yeah, that okay. worked better for everybody. I guess. So. Yeah, yeah, after. Like I said, I'm just going to say, whatever they want. Look, they tried it. Tried it. Tried it. Tried it. Tried it. How are you going to do it? Our church is going to do it. We're so hopeful. We're so hopeful. I charged it for the first time this afternoon. Just about an hour. Just in time. All right, it's close enough. Seven o'clock, we'll get the meeting to order. Uh, open Meetings Act is posted on the back wall. Uh, roll call has been taken. Go ahead and say Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Yeah, motion for the consent agenda. Either one, two, or all three. Approve the consent agenda. Second. The motion to approve the consent <coughs> agenda was made by Thompson, seconded by Shiminti. Thompson? Yes. Shiminti? Yes. Chittenden? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Okay, now we'll go to open discussion. Joe, did you want to speak when we come up with the yeah, stuff on that part? Probably be better. Okay. Uh, Justin, you're up. But this is your opportunity. I don't, I don't have anything. Okay. I know I'm shocked. <laughs> I guess I do want to quickly thank all the for volunteering at the the National Night Out and, and getting out and doing that. That was a lot of fun. The kids talked about it for a couple of days afterwards. So I look forward to doing something like that again. I think that was really good thing for the town. So. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let's go to Ordinance 801 Zone Text Amendment. All right. So uh, Joe Benenak is here tonight. Um, so the First two agenda items, Ordinance 801 and then the Conditional Use Permit are kind of go together. Um, what Joe is looking to do is add a garage, two-car garage to his law office. Um, and I've talked to a couple of you about this, and I told the plan question the, the building part of it itself is not the issue. There's no concerns there with the, the issue is, is that it's not conforming structure right now. Just, we would allow that type of business if somebody was living there. But since somebody's living there, there's no, <clears throat> it's violating, I guess, the use clause in the zone. Um, so it's a non conforming use, which then we don't typically allow any improvements on or any enlargement on. Uh, so that's kind of what kicks it over to the Planning Commission and ultimately you guys. Um, what I've come up with through talking with Jeff Ray, the zoning administrator, and Marine, the city attorney, is that we need to 
amend the zoning text to allow law office as a conditional use in TA. If that gets approved, then the next motion would be to approve a conditional use permit. So Joe can continue to have the law office there. But that conditional use permit would then allow him to have the expansion for the garage. Very similar to what we did with the church a few months ago. They redid their conditional use permit to add on to the church. So that's kind of where I'm coming at from this. Uh, Jeff Ray had brought up the idea of rather than specifying what we would allow to vacancy, add something in there to allow non conforming uses as a conditional use. Marie thought that got a little more difficult, I guess, to manage because I've opened up more loose ends. Um, she felt that this was targeted enough um, and specific enough that it, she doesn't foresee a lot of issues with it in the future. Um, do you have anything else to add, Joe? God, or anything? Um, no, unless I can, you want me to add my history now? But yeah, if you want to go ahead with those, you can spend both of those. Um, so, for the record, my name is Joe Vandenack. I think I know most of you. Um, 1705. Kangaroo 6 is my house address. 1701, my office is the corner out just outside of Western Town Schmier. Um, that office was built as it is and permitted back in 1975. So what we've had is a change of the, the zoning since then, which makes me now known to form. And so I've um, been working with CJ trying to figure out what's the best way to just add on. Um, I think someone asked uh, what, what, I, what is my intent kind of to do. Um, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. It's made me think some more changes. Um, I've got a big house and I've got an office on the corner. I think the best use for that eventually is just convert it to a, a residence, which is what it was essentially built for back in 75. Um, so I, I've been there since 85 using it as my personal office. My dad had it before then. Um, I'm representing Chief Dillwig Inc. That is just my building corporation that owns that building 10 acres. I think if you looked at it, I had the uh, property survey back when we did it, we had to have the 10 acres. <coughs> and so I think that ultimately you take the two acre corner and you have a residence, whether I live there, or if that's how I saw it come about. Um, CJ asked me if I could claim that I live there. Um, my wife will tell you I probably live there, but um, I really don't. And if you wonder where the name Chief Dillwick comes, it's not related to Chief Itan here. It happens to be at that time when we formed the corporation, we had two dogs, one named Chief and one named Dillwick. That's my story. Um, I'm trying to go through the hoops <laughs> with everybody. <clears throat> you know, a couple times I'll just say that I'm really asking. I, I haven't had negative feedback, and I can I can show you a before picture and you know what the intended picture is is to put a front door and make it look like a house. Um, talk to CJ a little bit just because uh, at one point I thought, well, I can just add a shed on there. Well, I do have a house in 30 acres next door that I can put a great big shed based on the book from the house. I would like to have the storage here now and move it towards the house for either my future use or future sale, one way or the other. I think it adds more value to the town in terms of the tax base to have a nice house than it does a, a shed out there, quite honestly. Um, so I'm just asking for what's the best way to do it. I understand that the conflict between the open-ended, you guys choose whatever non-conforming use, conditional use is, versus the city attorney saying label it to a law office. Part of me didn't like that just because I was like, I don't want it to be singled out. And, but I understand her position is, you know, now you have one condition, you first, everybody can do it. So I'm asking for that. I will tell you that my personal experience with the city over the years, you know, I had the house over here next to the rooster, not to pick on anybody, but I was told that, that when I sold that, that it could never be a residence. So I sold it at a price. I was also told that the ground on the highway, I could never have septic tanks on it. So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm looking at you guys saying, hey, I'd, I'd just like to be fair. I, I want to be totally upfront with what's going on. Um, if you'd like to see, this is what it looks like right now. Okay, it's just an office building. Anybody would like to see what it looks like? And what I'm trying to do is get a better, bigger picture. 
Did you get? Oh, no, I didn't know if that one was in the pack. Yeah, okay. And that's what I'm, I'm just trying to move it to. And so I would just put the front door right where those existing front windows are. So it looks like a house with an entry and a garage door next to it. So, ramp so we can wheel you up and down when you fall. And I will down. have to have to, yeah, that too, man. <laughs> <laughs> But I still have to have it for ADA now as a commercial building. So I think that's, you know, just the history is it's been an office. It is, if you look at the, the plat map that was up there, you can see how um, there's plenty of space. I think the architect measured as a 65 feet. If we do a 28 foot wide space, there's still 65 feet to the actual boundary. So I'm off the setups. I'm not moving forward. I'm actually moving backwards. Um, and if you look at that plot again, I think you'll see a real east way where the land kind of goes like this and then veers a little bit to the west. It'd be really easy to someday subdivide that off and hopefully be. I'm trying to make it move actually more in compliance with the long term plan. Help myself. <laughs> Is there any questions for me? I mean, that's, I, I think I'm pretty straightforward. I'm yeah, just I looking for the best way to do it. <clears throat> yep. I, I was just going to point out to the council that, because um, I know somebody asked what down the road, what's this going to be? Uh, the future land use map is what I've got. And I'll see the cursor. That's the parcel we're talking about. So that is for the future, future land use map to be large lot residential down the road as the city grows. Uh, and, and Jeffrey was here a week ago at the planning commission thing and he told the planning commission then that the future land use map is your road map, your plan, where your zoning map is your law. We're in the process of updating that whole zoning ordinance. The zoning map will start to look more like this future land use map as we expand. So, uh, in that case, given this stuff, I think what Joe's trying to do lends itself to this in the future. Just to add to the, your large lot top process. Yeah. If you look at my place, I have a tree line around it. That whole corner was a five acre lot that my dad bought first. And so, if you split this into a two and a three, you now have a two acre. Lot with one house and a three acre lot. And then I, after that, I have 35 acres that is available for adjustments that eventually fit. Any other questions? That's, that's all I have here. Sounds pretty sure. straightforward to me. Yeah. At the risk of sounding ignorant, was it ever evaluated to change the zoning of the property from maybe TA to something else? Was that? We did talk about okay. that. We've kind of taken. The position I know Jeff and Marie were both <clears throat> shy away from spot zoning, sure, as much as they can. Okay, um, so that's why we went this route. Um, I know Carrie Duffy, the chair of the planning commission, brought up should this been zoned different in '97 when <clears throat> the city expanded? Yeah, <laughs> possibly. Um, I'm not sure. That was a '97 number. Yeah. So, and we kind of talked about it, but yeah, like Matt said, that was 25 years ago. Yeah. Um, this how we did this week. <clears throat> We've been talking about this for a couple months, I think, to kind of come up to this point. So, even if you were to rezone it towards something more residential, that wouldn't work because you still want to operate your business there, right? And yeah. So, if you're trying to just get a jump on, Maybe that transition here in a few years. Rather than build a shed, I would rather have a garage and yeah. extra storage. Yep. After last Friday or a week ago, Friday, with the intrusions we had, um, I really like to get stuff in the garage instead of sitting down. But, uh, yeah, so we, I, CJ and I, started, I don't know when that was originally, but uh, Aaron is my, my contract. Yeah. So I guess my I guess my concern is with Marine saying the law office. I do feel like that's just it's very specific. What if somebody wants a CPA firm? What if somebody wants a taxidermy? Then we change it. Thank you, girls. So case you're just going to keep adding to the conditional that permit, condition, which is the whole point of it. That's the point of conditional use. It's the same as it wasn't a church it wasn't part of the conditional use, and now it is. So it's just like we got to adapt as. We move forward, and it's a guide. Like I feel like the ordinances are guides for us, and every single thing is something different. Like 
I don't think we're ever going to have two projects that are exactly the same. That's just my opinion. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, if he sells it to another firm, we would just have to go through the process. Prior, they would have to be aware of. They would have to go through the conditional use process again. Yeah. I guess is it transferable? Um, because the churches is transferable. Not that I'm is. concerned about. I'm just curious. Correct. Um, the churches is. So you're right. Um, we could probably add something in that. I don't know if that's. I don't think that's his intent. I right. Church, I don't. I'm not saying we was. should. I'm just curious if it is transferable or not. Okay. So you guys want to make it transferable? Um, I mean, if somebody, if you sell it and someone wants to live there. Nothing needs to be changed. Nothing needs to be changed. So I mean, yeah, I think this is the cleanest and easiest way. To go I think weren't we advised not to set them up as transferable by Marine? Yeah, I think that I would recommend that. I think the church, because they were originally told it would be transferable, we kind of. <laughs> Would you have an issue with that? No. No, that's just some value for me. It's going to be announced. Yeah. yeah. But, and I understand, right? Just make sure I'm clear. Is if I move in there, I can still have an office space. I can still run my office. Correct. It's yeah. my house. Yep. So, yeah. So, exactly. I have, it's I just the fact that it's not your residence. Yeah. So, it's, the only way that traditional use would come back in is if somebody wanted to do the exact same thing. And use it just as a law office and not live in it. But if somebody wanted to move out there, live there, have an office, have an office they're fine. They're fine. Yeah. 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 I've kind of gone back and forth on this one, not for your particular case, Joe. Um, I think what you're doing makes sense. And it's an unfortunate situation that years ago was on the way it was and everything else. Um, do you get a point? I'm fine with it. Um, my main concern was just sprawl. Like if we opened up the law offices, I couldn't tell somebody with a straight face. If they're going to open up an accounting firm to say no, no, we only allow law offices, not accounting firms. But then, as you look at some of the other TA parcels around town where that could be applicable, for the most part, the future land use all supports that. And so, I don't have an issue with it. Um, I'd make a motion to approve it. Oh, we have to go to a public hearing first. Oh, sorry. I've been waiting for Mike to go to this public hearing. Well, I've been waiting for the council to give me time to yeah. go to it. Yeah, sorry, Mike. All right. All right. All right. Now we open up for a public hearing uh, at 7 18, according to that clock. <clears throat> One minute minimum. Yeah, you did. Hey, seventy seven degrees. <laughs> all day. It's crazy. Oh, wait. It goes up at five o'clock. Right Try to make it hot in here so we don't talk as much. <laughs> Here with no public comment, the public hearing is now closed at 719. I'll make a motion to approve um, ordinance 801, the zoning text amendment to allow law offices as a conditional use in TA. Second. Motion to approve Ordinance 801 was made by Shiminti and cited by Thompson. Shiminti? Yes. Chittenden? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Okay, now I have the conditional use permit. We'll just go straight into the public hearing for that. Yeah, I think we kind of covered everything. Yeah. Um, they go together. Um, yeah, once we get the approval, get some drafted to get signed off on. So, yes, we'll open up the public hearing at 7.20. 
Okay, public hearing is closed at 721. With the motion to approve conditional use permit for Chief Dillard. A second. A motion to approve the conditional use permit was made by Thompson and seconded by Chittenden. Chittenden? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Schminty? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, resolution 2023-5 audio video recording of meetings policy. Motion. So what you guys have in the packet for you is a resolution to kind of fix the guidelines to not only record, but restore the videos um, and the audio recordings of all of the council meetings. Um, I did talk to the city attorney about any privacy issues or anything they can be aware of. Um, her concern more that we have something in place to govern what we do with these videos. Um, I reached out to the other city administrators, uh, the ones that did do recording. Um, basically follow the state guidelines for record retention, which is one year for audio and video recordings. Uh, so that's what I based that off of. Um, our plan is to, basically we have, we have a free YouTube account with our Google Workspace accounts that we all switched to. So I, under mine, I set up a City of Median YouTube page. State law, we have to have the minutes ready within 10 days for public review. Um, we're usually by the end of the week to have that done. Um, so it's like five days to have the videos posted to YouTube. And then the way the state reads, it specifically says that uh, digital and audio and video recordings are to be kept for one year after the minutes are approved. So like I say, it's pre-recorded tonight. The minutes of this meeting are approved at the September meeting. So it'll be a year and one month that we keep it. Um, I guess I'm open to any questions or concerns you guys have. CJ, it sounds like you've done some research on other communities that have done this or may not have done it. Um, what's your general consensus on towns of our size in doing this? Is that common or uncommon? Um, towns of our side, I don't think it's very common. Okay. No, Valley does it. Valley's probably double. Um, what Valley does is they live stream them on Facebook, and then I think they're just kept on their Facebook page for people to go back and look. Pikmin, I think there's something similar. Um, I think the video files are just kept on their website. A link to the YouTube channel on our website. Okay. Yeah, and then other towns I know just do audio, and other towns no digital records. Sure. Minutes. And I know we, we've talked a little bit about the minutes and things like that. Um, you know, Brady and I are very aware of the Open Meetings Act that specifies in there how soon the minutes have to be ready and when the paper is available and what's required in there. All like that letter of the law and being respectful. Such digital recordings and stuff aren't really addressed in the Open Meetings Act. The only thing about it is just If this were to go through, 
and let's say there's some sort of technical issue, I mean, that wouldn't prevent us from having a meeting, would it? I mean, no. it's, a, it's a policy, like a guideline, right? right. Not, a, not a statute, anything like yeah. that. Right. Okay. I guess if our internet didn't work, the power went out. Yeah. We just want to meet. Yeah. Right. Or if there's a natural disaster or something like that, we'd still be able to hold a, hold a meeting. Yeah. Well, I don't know how YouTube or really Facebook work, but like, could somebody take this video off of YouTube and then put it on Facebook and share it all over everything? Like, is that something that people do? We could, yeah, if it's put out, but it's no different than paper and it's sort of like that, I guess, in that regard. Um, I've been talking with Eric would be to kind of get over all our IT stuff. Um, I think there's a way talking to him that we could watermark the videos. So we would watermark the city logo that's on there so we know that's our video. So if it didn't go out, we thought we got altered in any way, we could at least have our copy and say this, this is the watermarked copy. And I think YouTube does have some copyright protection on the accounts. So People try to edit videos that aren't theirs, and there's so much for herbal sale to go through. I am not a audio, video, movie editing specialist in any way. So, I say, is it worth putting it out there, or is it worth keeping them for a record and then you need them to them? Or if somebody wants them, you send them to them. I mean, just having it, I mean, you get the minutes, right? Like. I don't know if and it for everything, like special meetings, budget planning, all of that. I just address for council meetings. Um, so I think with anything that involves full council council would um, I mean, we could open it up for like planning commission and CRA and everything if that was something we wanted to do. I know talking to some of the people I used to work with in Blair, I think they they're doing like a through uh, great planes up there, like a local access channel, so people can watch the meetings live. I mean, we obviously don't have something like that here. But I think Omaha's, we love you could watch them on Cox, Cox 140 or whatever channel. But they're not recorded. They're just like a one and done deal, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the um, Open Meetings Act does allow anybody that wants to come in and record audio and video of the meetings. Ralston does do a Zoom for theirs. Ralston does? Yeah. I mean, the, the concern is, I guess, for me, I'm not a, I'm an electrician. I'm not a professional councilman. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know all the rules, right? So it's just an added little bit of pressure knowing that you're going to be recorded and videotaped, <clears throat> not being very proficient in one thing, right? But at the same time, I would like it if more people would come to the meetings. You know what I mean? What's the difference there? Yeah. I mean, we put the video I think the difference in. is they're still not coming to the meeting, but then it's going out into a, typically a negative light on social media because now they're watching it in their spare time instead of coming to, you know, spending the time coming to me. I get it. Some people work, they have children, they, they can't attend, but that's I've just seen so much negativity on UTAN everything page about stuff in town and all of that. And I'm just wondering if this is going to. Well, that's what I said. You, we record it and then if somebody wants it, well, have the, you know, you've got the document request. Yeah. <clears throat> on the flip side of that, though, it right. might clear up a little bit that's of true. confusion yeah. from what was one person, one said, person so. said happened at the meeting versus what actually happened at right. the meeting. That's you true. Know, that's a great point, John. It's just. In my opinion, I don't have an issue with it. Is it a little bit uncomfortable? Yeah, but so is sitting up here in front of a room full of fine people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just. Yeah. Okay. What, was the, what was the catalyst for the resolution? Um, transparency. I mean, we want to be transparent as, as to what we do. And so, the um, accomplishment, what's the issue? I mean, I kind understand of you know, we could, somebody could take it on Facebook and make faces of you. But Make you look like a weird monster or whatever, but if we're sitting here telling the truth and the people need to hear it, that's what's being done. Uh, what 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 is bad after that? I, I just don't see anything bad. I, I love the discussion though. Sometimes I hear it. I want to hear it. Let's wake up. 
And I guess that just speaking right to that, that would be one of my concerns is if that starts becoming a thing on Facebook, I would want to revisit it. If all they're doing, you know, if it's going out there and we're trying to turn it into cartoons or if it's, if it's not serving its purpose of being informative, it's just trying to start, you know. Yeah. Well, how are you, how are you going to monitor? I'm on Facebook. I, mean, uh, I see every post. I mean, are, you sure sure post. I mean, are you going to monitor? It makes us bliss. In other words, <laughs> most people are making cartoons out of it or most people are getting informed by it. But I mean, the informative part of it to me is the core and that's, that's righteous. That's that's what the people need, especially if you can call them lazy, you can call them non active, you can call them whatever they do, they don't show up for the meetings. Now they have it. And if they can continue to contribute negative public sentiment after they go into the meetings, but they got the stuff right here, then you know who they are. I guess is the best way to put it. Because if, if they're just whiners and they want to um, whine, let them whine. We're doing our job. We're getting it out to them. Sure. Sure. Small thing with what you're doing. Let me ask you a question first. I believe you said YouTube have copyright laws. So if they do take that and modify it, uh, they can be prosecuted, I believe. So that's hmm. what I was kind of wondering too. Yeah. This, yeah. I think YouTube's I, a good platform for I it. I think you have to pay like a fee to get that copyright on there to keep that from happening, but it's something we can look into. Yeah. Okay, Justin, I'll let you. Um, just with putting this stuff out here, transparency is a big thing when it comes to engagement. I think getting it out there will in turn get us more community involvement. It might not be everybody, but I think you'll see a lot more people want to get involved because they'll see what's going on in their free time. And they might be like, you know, maybe I can free up a couple things here and there to actually go to the community. And, and I, I'm fine, awesome. I'm awesome. fine trying it, yeah. but. Again, I think if it starts getting out of hand, because I mean, there's been plenty of things I've seen on there that are misconstrued from what was actually said. So great point, John, like it's how you're going to conflict the, you know, you can't post out there and say, this is what was said if something else was really said. I think that is worth it right there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it takes the questions away versus one person's word on a social media platform <clears throat> versus what actually happened. There's really no arguing that right. fact at that point so yeah i think that's a good point some of the managers city managers i talked to felt when they started recording things I mean, we also have one for our security cameras going in here that that cut down on and we don't have all this gear to start but okay. i'm them really accounts me so yeah. it's like hey you know this is being recorded just as much as it's on you guys and us mm -hmm. it's on the public too to that's a good point yeah you know, hey, if I say something dumb or put my foot in my mouth here, they're freaking out know about it. Yeah. So, and we, I was going to point out, so we do have the option. Um, <clears throat> we could do Zoom with these if we wanted to. So the, this whole system set up. So if we had a, a meeting with engineers or wanted to have somebody do a presentation over Zoom, they could do it through this setup. Um, and we could also, if we wanted to, live stream the meeting so people could get on and watch them. My concern with that is, uh, just like you mentioned, is, is we have internet problems and we can't live stream the, the meetings. Are we going to get reached for that? Well, that's also just an added benefit. Is. Is this, this is an added benefit. Yeah, I mean, this isn't something we have to do, but I feel well, like... I don't want to hold up a meeting because... Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna, that's not going to happen. And I would say as far as what platform you pick, so what we've run into with Zoom at work, so when everybody was at home during COVID, everybody's on their laptop, right? And everybody's logged into Zoom there. So you see everybody's faces. It's like the break bunch, right? Yeah. So everybody's <clears throat> now, some of us are at home, some of us are in a conference room. So the Zoom off of our projectors in the conference room, everybody just looks like little, you can't really even see anybody, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. kind of distorted. It's, and I mean, we have good AV equipment, good AV equipment. And so I guess I would look at it from that, like does YouTube show something better or, or do you think Zoom is a better answer for that? I, I guess I've never live streamed on YouTube. Right. I'd have to ask my but we're not talking about content creators. I think, yeah. I think if we're gonna do it, we just stick Well, with he's it. just taping it, I guess is what he's yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, YouTube but, thing. And... I agree, John. I mean, let's. That's the camera right there. Yeah. 
just have to start wearing a nicer shirt to meetings. For what? I, I didn't even came to Zoom. I would just leave it to where, I mean, if you're Zooming in, you're not able to like join the discussion or you know anything like that. It's no good about people jumping in on their microphones. Or, you know, yeah. trying to, no, trying the Zoom would be for them to just be a way of taping it right. okay. yeah. for, just, for us. But if we're not all having our own on here, you're not going to be able to. And then it goes to where it's like the person talking is who they're showing. So you want more of the, the entire meeting. I just didn't know what would well, this look is better, better, like you could see better. Yeah, this we're, is on we're using right Zoom to record it. Oh. It's not being, it's not. And this is what you guys look like. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good angle for me. No, we're not Hey, can we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 2023 dash five. Second. Motion to approve resolution 2023 5 audio and video recording of the meetings policy was made by Chittenden, signed by Shinman Peterson. Yes. Thompson. No. Chimanti? Yes. Chittenden. Yes. All right, move on to pay application number 12, Midtown Plumbing. Make a motion to approve the. Uh, I don't have much there. Sorry, we were close to being done. Yeah, I've got a couple of years left. left. Um, we're going to meet with them the next few weeks. Uh, there's at least two customers I know of that obviously are being difficult, maybe, about letting Midtown in. Um, I talked to Maureen about it. Um, one of them owns a bunch of rentals that are in various states of repair. That will work with them directly to get those meters in when those houses are usable. Okay. And, yeah. And then the other one, um, I've talked to a couple of times. They have some concerns with having the meter in the house, which you know that that's their opinion. You know, um, I've given them some options, and I haven't got any response back. Uh, ultimately, if if we feel the need to, we can. On our meter system, we can shut the water. That's like the last step. Um, we're going to try to meet next week with Zach and the town and get their end wrapped up so we can close out the contract. We've got five meters left that we got to have prepared with the equipment. And then we'll probably have a couple on hand. So if we get a new house or some breaks, then we'll cut them. Yeah, and I think they might have one on the for sure into it. Maybe one or two stops so like this. Motion to approve the pay application for Midtown for four thousand ninety seventy. Second. 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 Second.
the railroad, did they start on the lift station? Yes. So they got started on the, the crossing at the lift station today. They told us originally they'd be working on this one tomorrow. Yeah. Schedule maybe? Uh, they got equipment in there at 2 o'clock today. I don't know how late they work at 4 o'clock and park down here. I don't know if that means they're staging to this one tomorrow. In either tomorrow or the next couple of days, this cross will be done. The school will notify everyone in the school that it's going to be done tomorrow. That's originally what they told us. So, I mean, you guys Sorry. need to make sure you're communicating with the school. You, you know, if we know, we will. Yeah. But our so dispatch is, told us yesterday to, to for today. <clears throat> but they also, the share is three days behind. So, yeah, the railroad is not like the only reason we found out is dumb luck that Luke my boss at the and then station, station. <laughs> and Brandy cut the guy down here because I reached out several times to my time. So, do we have anybody that uh, we have police presence the next morning and after school for the rest of the week? That we can have somebody down there to they keep people there. No, the they do. Okay. They, they got a flagger. By their rule, they've got to have flaggers. Okay. So I'm sure the kids will still be walking. Just they said there'll be no walking across. That's why I had the school put out that notice. Okay. Then I, when I talked to them down there. I go, will the kids be able to walk? Because we have no busy whatsoever in town. They're like, no, this whole thing will be shut off for a day. So I would be on the safe side until the school that communicate. Tomorrow <laughs> week, and that that means we do the rest of the week because we just it's out of our hands. We don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I tried to cover a couple times already this week, so they're terrible at communicating. The railroad, yeah, they're suck. They can do two shifts. Yeah, the, uh, it's their railroad. They're gonna deal with what they're gonna deal. Yeah. Look on your um, number nine and number four uh, schedule adapted for equipment. Mower side by side skid loader and a schedule for replacement. I mean, is that something you're going to work on, or is that something? Well, it's kind of, I mean, I don't know if that's something I need to work on with you. And we've, and we've talked about it. Part of the budget is, you know, we've got five or seven pieces of high dollar equipment. Eventually, they're going to be replaced. Yeah. What Luke and I talked about is trying to get on a rotation where maybe. If you're or the other year, we're going to be changing one of those so we're not in a situation where we didn't change anything for 10 years and now we need a new truck, a new bucket, a new mower, yes. all at the same time. No, so that, that's all. Yeah. Like the mowers, the warranties are up here December. So, so they don't have very many hours, I think. Uh, the mower's under 500. And I got a bid for that. Trade in for 7,500 for both. Is what ties me. For both of them? Each of these, oh. each of yeah. them. And we only paid 10,000 for it, or 12,000. Uh, 13,000 13, per mower, and the new ones that they already made are 15, 16. So, why don't we? I mean, is there a problem with them if we're doing maintenance? Yeah. I don't understand why we have a problem every time we pick yeah. a mower. We don't What's like the problem with them. They're just constant little things that go wrong. Enough well, to spend double. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it doesn't cost us anything because I mean, I'm getting feedback from people, even with the, the police car, like you guys really needed a new police car. You know, I mean, certain things I've heard that, totally opposite on that so. really okay. Yeah. I've heard I've heard both yeah. ends and, and I agree. And, we and gotta some heard. people some people's belief is you run them until they're dead, yeah. and then you don't have much value in them, but you get five more years out of it. But what do you put into it in maintenance and parts and that kind of stuff? Where right now I don't I don't have any but how old are they? When did three, it three, three years. years? So I had one blow a fuse. I don't know why it's blow a fuse, but they'll come out and fix it. I think putting them on some sort of a program is a good idea. Yes, but we do that. everything. I mean, we do it. The fire station does it like it's yeah. just you figure out it's rough life expect expectancy, and then if you, you know, know you're going to spend ten fifteen thousand dollars a year for this equipment, it's just becomes part of the budget. Yep. Um, it's a skid loader, and we talked about that. Um, mostly, I don't think it's got a lot of hours on the wheel, but I think there's a demand for that model. And from what Luke's told me, talking to some of the guys, we could get a pretty good trade in on it. Um, I think the project. 
cost for a new one is double from the credit. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Last year, they gave, these are just off my memory. I think they were going to give us 42 for ours and quarter us the next one for 50. We do have an agreement with the school. They pay for part of the skid loader. I think there's six, eight months left on that lease for that loan. Um, I'm going to meet with the new superintendent or the interim superintendent Thursday to kind of just meet him and you know, take his brain on some of those things that we share on. Uh, but I know that's the kind of thing we've been talking about, what kind of what the equipment means. And that's one of the things is just, we just don't want to get in that point where five years down the road, we need everything all day. No, I agree. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Just put all the kind of heavy machinery that we have and then age how much we originally paid for it, put it in a spreadsheet. That way we can at least get a general idea of what's coming down the line, maybe. Hours, how many hours are putting a year on? That's your motors, yeah. are, your motors are going to be traded off more often than your skills. Well, your skills are going to last you 10 years. You're Probably not yeah. seven years, Kevin, before you, you should trade. I mean, you could. Cat yeah. um, and then Seattle Lincoln will give us, they'll do a lease program with us, which as much as we use it, we'll put a lot of hours on it. <clears throat> At least might be the way to go with, with the skin. Right. Yeah, we yeah, say when we were in numbers last time, it was like the amount you paid over the five years of the loan was like one and a half times the cost of the lease. Yeah. That's why it was a purchase, because purchase it, own it for five to seven years, sell it for the same amount you I mean we paid, I think it's what did you say, 46? I don't know what we paid. 56. And they're gonna give us 42. Find, it's hard finding any of the records. <laughs> I mean, we're going to lose like $5,000 or $7,000 over the seven, I think it was seven years or whatever it was. Yeah. But with the government cost, yeah. you get that savings. Yep. So NMC is going to set the sales rep up to give me a trade value on the skid and side by side. Just so we can get an idea where we're at. I think it's a good idea. So those numbers. two and then the two mowers. <laughs> really what I'm looking What's it, what's included in the lease program? In other words, do they take care of the maintenance for the oil changes, everything? Yeah. That's significant. Do you come that, that equipment's used. They the don't run the mowers, though. What's that? They don't do that with mowers, do they? No, mowers. The, the mowers we've got are those engine, what are they called? Engine oil guard. Yeah. So you change the oil like every five hours. So we, it's like three years. So. Yeah, there's very minimal maintenance on the mowers. Um, skid, yeah, they come up. And they, and CAT comes up and they service skid, generator, side by side. Mm -hmm. well, they do as well. And we want the service contract with it. Yeah, yeah we could do the new generator too. We've got a CAT for the new generator for this issue. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's. Hoping to get on some kind of schedule. Um, one other thing I'll point out on Luke's is number two under the street department um, condition of the core samples. So we finished this out a month ago. We took several core samples from the, the areas that Steve and Luke identified. Um, they should have their report back to us soon. <clears throat> Next month, I think we'll have to approve our one and six year plan. Um, and I reached out to Steve because Luke and I talked, and there's some funds left in the budget for repairs. So, if that's something we need to do, we want to get it done this year or pick a section of town to do cracks in the game or something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's money left, there's plenty of panels to be replaced. So, yeah. I think we've used it to get it done. The problem is getting somebody here to do concrete work. I'll send you a couple numbers. Don't send me matches. Don't send me matches. What's his name? I call him. Yeah, don't send me. Why? Tim didn't get his report in. He's been swamped for the last couple weeks. Getting up, but um, I know when I talked to the National Line out, I think everybody <clears> thought it was really good. Tim's boy and my boy cooked 180 hot dogs in about two hours. 
they're all gone. Um, I think that's we will we heard nothing but good things about it. It's um, <laughs> good we wanted to point out that in my report there is with the cruiser. It's it's nearly done. There's two bugs to work out some of the systems, uh, just some things to make it more user friendly for the guys. So hopefully that'll get done pretty <clears throat> quick. And then once it's hundred percent, we'll figure out what we want to do with the old one. Get rid of it. On that note, CJ. What uh, what year is the old one, and how many miles were on that one? It's 2015, 40,000. 40, miles. Okay. 40, 50, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's it's like with the truck. It's not. It's hard miles. You know, it was your car. You'd be like, this is a great car. Okay. It's hard miles. It's gonna be. And there, I think it needs. Drive shaft, much in the and then alignment. So we can make those two considering those ones. Matt would know when that doesn't put the radar out and the camera. So, right. so everything else is yeah, not for sure. with it. The sheriff's office will be interested in you know, deciding the price and stuff. Okay. So uh, I'll make it as like a backup car. So, um, I sent you guys an email later earlier this week. The League of Municipalities <laughs> Conference is at the end of September. That's a good one. Go down to for the day, day and a half again in September. Let me know. Um, I mentioned too that Jeff was working on the zoning stuff. So his plan is to come back to the planning commission meeting we're going to do on the 20th of, excuse me, the 18th of September. It's a Monday um, with a draft to present to the planning commission. Um, the other thing is the budget workshop is next Thursday at 4.30. Ed and Lisa were out here with Randy and I in the eight. Um, they got through in a day, but it took them two days last year, so I think that's a good sign. They got, they didn't have anything to major. Uh, it's going to take the proposed budget that we're up to so far, that draft, and plug that in, make sure everything works. Um, we, Ed and I were talking about it, just kind of a real broad review on it and think that the, the overall budget is going to go down from last year. Uh, mostly because we, we're not doing these million dollar list station projects and things like that. Uh, and I'm sure you're all aware of that they call the postcard bill is if our budget or our asking level goes up more than 2%, we have to go to the joint hearing with the county and all the other entities that are going over that limit. Um, this year they changed it so one of the elected officials has to be present for each community regardless if if we have to go so if we raise our tax or asking more than two percent yeah Randy and I one of you have to go and that's the mayor's problem. <laughs> um, they're really bad about the postcards. We have no control over that. So people last year that had to go got them two days after the joint here. I, mean, that's, I just found out actually yesterday, it sounds like we're scheduling it for the 19th of September, which would be our council meeting and our resolution to the head of budget hearing. So we may, in the event we have to go to that, we might have to change our I don't think that's going to be a problem. So our, our plan for September is to have the budget hearing on the 19th right before our council meeting. Just so everybody's aware that at that budget hearing. At 6 o'clock then? Or? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 I think we did it at seven. Oh, so just do it at the same time to get yeah. the council meeting to follow. Oh, yeah, okay. we'll just have the council meeting immediately follow. So we'll have the hearings. There's no action of that. And then we actually adopt the budget at the council meeting. You guys have anything else you want to put on the agenda for the next one? Scott, one no, no agenda items. Uh, just wanted to thank you, Tim, the police department, and the fire departments for the kids' night out. I thought that was great. Um, it was really nice Saunders County to show up as well, but the ball field looked great. A bunch of kids down there, so that was great. Hopefully, we can do that again next year. Tim, you already got someone's bucket t shirts for the kids and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, I thought the part he, he helped on the first day of school. 
um, yep. within the senior train yep. for right. school. And so he kind of walks the town yep. road so that we wouldn't have to worry about people coming flying out of the that place below that stop sign. So. Second. Motion to adjourn at 7.53 was made by Thompson, Senator by Shaminti. Shaminti. Yes. Chittenden. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Getting some sleep. Huh? Getting some sleep. 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 Sleep.